the permit of her hand. All through life himself raises. He is building on the sand. All right, greetings to you, friends and neighbors. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, this is Brother Ricky Duck. And uh, we are bringing to you the Bread of Life Streamcast, even though it's a little late. I've got October 19th, but that was Monday's uh, scheduled time for this. However, this is, I believe, the uh, 21st, I'm believing. And uh, so we're streaming live at this time from Hickman, Kentucky. And uh, this is program number 62, our subject, Godhead, subtitled Father and Son Doctrine. And I think most of the problems have been corrected, and we are still dropping a few frames, but understand Zito's still working on the problem, so we're going to try to go through it anyway and try to get this part done. If we can hold the drop frames down low enough, it might surpass, it might pass the uh, my qualifications. And uh, so anyway, we're going to go right into it now and get ready to go into it, but we first want to say we're from the Church of Jesus Christ. We're located 1205 High Street, Union City, Tennessee, and uh, service schedules every Sabbath day, 2 p.m. Invite you to come out and give us a visit and learn these truths that will set you free from Mr. Bible. And uh, we also uh, like to mention we're on YouTube, Facebook, Africa TV, and Periscope. And uh, we want to give you a cordial invitation. Again, come out and give us a visit sometime. Praise God. And uh, let's go ahead and go right into our subject matter at this time. <clears throat> and uh, the subject title, Godhead, Father and Son Doctrine. Now, I, I've got the scripture uh, we'll read next, but I want you to notice when we post it, how Apostle John said, If any man preach the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and Son, if they... He said, don't, uh, don't uh, bid them into your house, referring to, I guess, the church of God, uh, church house, so forth. Uh, don't bid them Godspeed. You can't let them preach. You can't give them offerings. You can't give them money. But I, I say in this modern time we're in now, about everybody's teaching that other, uh, why he wasn't allowed. Apostle John wouldn't allow them in there if they're not teaching father and son doctrine. And... Um, so let's go ahead and look at that uh, verse of Scripture we were referring to. And uh, right here it is. It's Second John 9. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. If you do not abide in the doctrine of Jesus Christ, you do not have God. That's what John said. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. Now, I know some folks, that means right there, both of them are, you know, just wait, read what he's talking about. We're going to go into context of what Apostle John's talking about because they all believe the same thing. So let's move right ahead along here and look at our next uh, post here in uh, St. John 14. In St. John 14, 9-10, Jesus saith unto him, as uh, of course Philip had asked him, Show us the Father, and it will satisfy us, suffice us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Notice his next statement. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Now, I was trained right off the bat, coming out of the world of sin, to believe Jesus is saying he's the Father right there. Now, I'm going to give you enough scripture. If you believe the word of God, you will see the distinctive difference of what he's saying. Now, first of all, uh, and I, you hear me say this a lot, before this world was formed, before, while it was without form and void, God had every one of us in his mind. That's how come he knew Cyrus before he was born, uh, 200 years, uh, Isaiah prophesied. 
That's how come God said I knew Jeremiah before he was formed in the womb. That's how come God knew that Jesus Christ was the one that was ordained to die on the cross. And so God, and if you read what Paul said about this, we were predestined in him before the foundation of the world that we would, we should be holy and without blame. Now that's perfect. We were predestined for that. We're predestined to be the temple of the Almighty God. Now, Jesus, before that he could manifest God, had to, first of all, as Luke recorded, increase in favor with God. Did not Luke say that? Jesus increased in favor with God. And then Paul wrote that he had to learn obedience. So Jesus Christ, Yeshua, had to learn obedience. And Isaiah 50, Yahweh, Almighty God, woke him every morning and was teaching him. And then Jesus said in John 8, I always do the things that please him. Praise God. So, he said he was taught of God, taught of the Father. So, in context, bringing everything into focus. You know, Jesus Christ said in John 12, 49, the words I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. So since he wasn't speaking of himself, he said he was commanded what to say. And even De in, in Deuteronomy, Moses said, God spoke and said, I will raise him up. I will command him what to say. So here comes Jesus then. Increase in favor with God. Learn obedience. Come to the full favor. Come to full obedience in his life at age 30. Was baptized of John. And then, this is the first human perfect man that God had ordained before the world. All of us were ordained. If you read it and understand it, you'll see it. So now, Jesus is the first one. Now, if you notice what Psalms of David said, and I believe it was Paul requoted that, that uh, we have all come short of the glory of God. We were ordained to attain the glory of God. Now, when Jesus was the first man to come along and, and done this, he said, I have kept my Father's commandments. And if you want to put the word God there, it's fine. Because when Jesus ascended to heaven, he told the women, I send to my Father and your Father, I send to my God and your God. So, Jesus learned obedience, said, I have, I have kept my God's commandments, I've kept my Father's commandments, and since he had done that, he was worthy now. He's a man without sin. He hadn't committed no sin. And because he was a sinless person, Isaiah 15, 4, God Almighty, the Creator, said, I've called you in righteousness. We've been called while we were sinners. He was called in righteousness. He had committed no sin. And so when he was baptized by John, the Holy Ghost, God, John 3, 34, God gave him the Spirit without measure, and the Holy Ghost come down. He received the fullest power of God. Called Colossians 2 and 9, the fullness of the Godhead. It didn't remove Jesus out of his own body. No, it did not. And um, so what he done was, he was submissive to God. He submitted himself to God. And now he's manifesting God by walking the commandments. Now notice what John said. If we keep the commandments, he, we're in him. If we keep the commandments, we're in him. Then he said, John said, then he's in us by the Spirit. We're supposed to grow in grace and knowledge to the fullness of God and be the very image of Jesus Christ himself, be a joint heir. Now when Jesus said this right here in John 14, 9, he was the only human on this earth that had attained the fullness of God, become one with God as ordained before the world for all humans. So he's the firstborn of many brothers. And he said here, when, when John, uh, uh, Philip wanted to see uh, God, he, he said, uh, show, us, show us the Father, show us God, show us the Father. And that's when him with the fullness of God was commanded to speak these words because he's the temple of Almighty God. 
And he said, Philip, have I been a long time with you? You have not recognized. Well, that, in other words, the works I'm doing, this is God. It's not me. As he says right down here, the words I speak to you, I'm not speaking of myself. The Father that dwells in me, he's doing the works. When I speak for blind eyes open and they open, it's the Father in me doing this body powerful work. It's God in me doing this work. The Son can do nothing himself, but what he sees the Father do, this doeth the Son likewise. God showed Jesus visions every morning when he would pray of the ministry that, that he would go through that day. He showed him these things. And so here at this appointed time, uh, we have this spoken by the Lord himself. Now let's move on. I see we're dropping a few frames, and we'll have to see how bad we are. If we have to, we'll reboot it and do it again. When Zito gets this thing fixed, we'll come back and do the whole thing over if we have to. Hopefully it'll hold out. <laughs> okay, let's look. As much as we can, I want us to glean what we can maybe through this. And because you need to understand this, this, this is the one faith. This is the one faith. When you believe anything contrary to the doctrine of the apostles, it's not the one faith. It's come from Mr. Babylon. It come from Rome. John 8, 17, 18, Jesus Christ says this. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. He's getting a point across. Well, Jesus said, I'm one that bears witness of myself. I'm the Messiah. I'm the Christ. I bear witness of myself. And the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. So Jesus is very plainly telling them, in your law, it's written, if two people bear witness, it's considered valid truth. He said, I'm one that's bearing witness, and the Father is also bearing witness. He said, there's your two. There's your two witnesses. It's me and God witnessing. He's not, he's not his own father. He's not a second person of a Godhead. Either way, in what the Tudors call it, I call them Tudors now, that, that, that's not the way it is. And what I'm saying that, I'll give you a man that I, I uh, viewed one of his videos, Brother Shane Vaughn. He's got a, and I will, when I get this thing set right, I will give a link to that one message. Because there's about four scriptures in there that makes it sound like that Jesus himself is the creator. And that's what folks lean back on. But he's got a breakdown through the uh, translations and such. It's so obvious. I mean, I quote you one in the KJV that, that, that it's plain as day. I do it a lot. It's Isaiah 42, verse 5 and 6. Verse 5 talks about the Creator. Okay? There's your Creator, Lord. That's Yahweh. Then in the next verse, in referring to Jesus of Nazareth, he said, I call you in righteousness, and I'll hold your hand. So there, Jesus wasn't the creator. It was Yahweh, the creator of God, creator Lord. Now, those other four places, by translation foul-ups, is why it makes it sound like that Jesus was the creator. And that's where everybody wants to believe. Trinity wanted it, oneness wanted it that way, because it fits their theology. But truth is truth. When the Lord began to give me revelation of Jesus Christ, it wasn't either one of them. And when he gave me night visions, when he gave me confirmations, it wasn't either one of them. Praise God. Now, look at the question we have here. Did Jesus say that the testimony of two is true? Yes or no? You read it for yourself. We just read it. You have to say, yes, it is. Is not the Son one witness and the Father the second witness? Now, I hear somebody that don't understand enough yet to catch on. They said, you believe in two persons? You believe in two gods? Whatever. You, know, you hear all that kind of stuff all the time. No, when you read and understand Peter's revelation, it's one God and the man he raised up called Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus Christ said in John 7, 17, matter of fact, we probably got this in here the minute we get to it. But to answer that, that one would have been yes. Okay, we'll go to this next one right here. Honor from whom? Honor from whom? John 8, 54-55. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. 
If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honors me, of whom you say, this is Jesus doing the talking, whom you say, that he is your God. Now, how many recognize what Jesus said right here? If Jesus, the question is, did Jesus honor himself? Yes or no? How can you answer that? Yes or no? Go to the scripture we just read. It's right there in front of you. Jesus said, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. Did Jesus honor himself? Answer is no. Now, next question. Did the Father honor him? Did the Father, Father honor Jesus? Yes or no? According to Jesus' own words, it's my Father that honors me, of whom you say he is your God. So it's God that honored Jesus. Jesus did not honor himself. So in John 14, 8 and 9, he's not saying he's the Father, because if he did, he, there's some cross-up in words and terminology there. Now let's move to the next one. Who makes decision? Matthew 20, 23. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give. And it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. Now, their mama, James and John, instigated them to ask this question, or let she ask it. I had to go back and double check verses above that. But whatever it was, Jesus said, to sit on my right hand or my left hand in the kingdom, it's not mine to give. It's not up to me. But he went on to say, it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. So Jesus is saying it's up to God. It's not, up, that's not my decision. <clears throat> Question, is it the Son's decision, yes or no? I know some folks having trouble answering that right there. The answer is that the son's decision, if you take Jesus at his words, the answer is no, it's not his decision. Now, is it the father's decision? If you take Jesus at his word, the answer is yes. So it's obviously we're seeing the father is not the son. The son is not the father. Jesus is not God. Never said he was anywhere. No apostle didn't say that. Now, that later on, when he took on the fullness of God, he was Emmanuel, God with us, because of manifesting God. But from zero to 30, he was not. There was no manifestation. It's a man later manifesting God. They're letting the light of God shine out of him. Now, let's look at the next question, since some of you have wondering why I said that. I'm going to go what Jesus said. God or myself. Now, those of you that will, you don't have to say it out loud. I'm going to say it three times and you think of what you're saying if you say it in your mind. God or myself. Now, I'm going to say it in the same context there. First, let's read it. Jesus answered and said unto them, My doctrine is not mine but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Now you see it. see what Jesus said himself. Jesus said it himself. If I say, if I say God or myself, God or myself, it's either God or myself, it's obviously I'm saying I'm not God. But Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua said, God or myself. We know there's not but one God. John 17, 3, Jesus prayed and said, Father, you're the only true God. Now question again, did Jesus lie when he said it wasn't his doctrine, but the one who sent him? Did he lie? I don't think nobody would say he lied, would you? I mean, we're talking about Messiah. All right, next question. Did Jesus say he was not God in the 17th verse? 
Now, I know what I have since. You can look at that when he says God or myself, it would be the same if you said it, if I said it, if he says it. The myself in that statement is not God, whoever that is, right? When you say God or myself, the myself is not God. Now, who's saying that part, though? It's Yahshua. It's Jesus of Nazareth. So, based on that, listen, I don't care where you go in a book and you think you figured out that Jesus is God, you cannot, cannot, cannot override his plain statement right there. You cannot do it. You would have to change it. You have to say he's lying there. You have to say he don't know what he's talking about. But it's Yahshua himself that said God or myself. When you, when you think you found something that says he is, you can be assured from this statement that you're not understanding the what you just read and you think he's saying it or somebody said it. You just think you understand what somebody else said when you read a text and you think, I chose Jesus as God. No, I don't because you can't override that. Can't do it. Yahshua said it. Got to be a believer of the word, not a tradition. Who can you speak against? Anybody have an idea who you can speak against? Matthew 12, 32. Jesus said, Whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaks against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. How many believe Jesus' words here? You can speak to, because I've heard some folks say he is the Holy Ghost. Well, I'd be contradicting what he just said. <laughs> Jesus Christ said, if you speak against the Son, it'll be forgiven you. If you speak against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven you. In this world here, nor in the one that's coming. So, is the Holy Ghost the Spirit of God? Answers, yes. It's not a third person. It's not a third individual. It's the Spirit of Almighty God. When God spoke to one man, the Bible said, I look at the stars above, I feel the heavens. His Spirit fills the whole universe. Many times, I believe in Paul said, he's at our right hand, or David, one of them said that. The Spirit of God is everywhere. In Him, we have our being. We move about. We're in Him because He's the Creator. His Spirit is everywhere. Now, on another note, Jesus Christ said, The angels behold the face of the Father in heaven. So there's a central figure in the image like we're made in. And that basically is called the one that's Father. But His Spirit is everywhere. When we receive the Holy Ghost, it's a measure of God's Spirit. It's not a different person. It's God Almighty in us. It's God in us. It's Jesus Christ said it's his God in him that's doing the works. Remember, John, gave, John said God gave him the Spirit without measure. Colossians 2 and 9, the fullness of the God was in Jesus Christ. Now, when we receive the Holy Ghost... And speak in tongues. We don't get the fullness of the Godhead. Because why? Bible study. We're still trying to get out of sin. He gave us the Holy Ghost to give us power. To become sons of God. Now it's up to us how we operate it. It's up to us what we do with what he give us. He give us the Holy Ghost. We're supposed to increase in favor of God as well. We're supposed to lay aside every way to sin. And not break the commandments. And not do things he said not do in the Bible. And not go in other stuff. <laughs> we won't go that way now. The question, is the Holy Ghost Spirit of God? Yes. Does the doctrine of Jesus Christ right here teach that the Son is the Father? Because the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Almighty God. It's nothing else. So, is it teaching that the Son is the Father or the Son is the Holy Ghost? No, it does not teach that, does it? If you have the doctrine of Christ, you have both. Matter of fact, if you notice right there, 
If there were a certain thing called Trinity, three persons of God, he, John wouldn't have said that. He would have said three there. He didn't say three there. And in 1 John 5 and 7, he didn't say there's three that bear record in heaven. That's Desiderius, a, a Catholic monk that put the Trinity spin on him when he translated the Word of God. It's not written by John. It wasn't said by John. And even Matthew himself wrote a, a gospel in the Hebrew language. And Matthew 28, 19, had even got uh, Father, Son, Holy Ghost in it. That other was added later when they put another translation to his. Just in case you didn't know. Now let's look at this one right here. Who knows the second coming? Brother Doug, you know? Nope. <laughs> Jesus Christ said, no man knows the day or the hour. How come you say he's coming after a certain vial and this and that? Because he is coming at that time. But you don't know what day it is. You don't know what hour it is. There's a 45-day spread when you go out in, into that study. And we don't know what day it is. But in Matthew 24, 36, But of that day and hour, referring to the coming of the Lord, of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. That's in Matthew's account. Mark 13, 32, But of that day... In that hour knows no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, no, what else? Neither the Son, but the Father. So, according to St. Mark, and according to words of Jesus Christ, no man knows the day or the hour. Angels don't know what day it is going to happen. He said the Son don't know when it's going to happen, but he said the Father does. Does that sound like they are exactly the same one? It's not a two-person Godhead. It's not a uh, two-God doctrine, if you can understand. Get past that old bias tradition stuff. It's a man that God raised up from this planet of the nation of Israel, of the brethren of Israel. And after he had overcome the world, he said he'd overcome the world, Satan couldn't get him to break down and sin like he did me and you. So God raised him from the dead and put him in heaven at his right hand, gave him all power in heaven and earth to rule until the time comes when he will deliver it back to God. <laughs> it's in there, ain't it? Bust your bubble on that old tradition stuff. Just don't want to believe the truth. Why would you not want to believe the truth? Is it because you love the church you're in? Is that it? You love a church that's got fine carpet and pews and, and lots of money and all that. Is that what you're after? Or do you want the truth? To believe truth, you've got to believe these scriptures. If you don't believe these scriptures, you're loving tradition. What did, what did the Lord say to the Pharisees? Huh? About traditions. Well do you reject the commandments of God through your traditions. Reject the word of God through traditions. Why do it? What, what did it do for you? Let's look at this. The question we have... We'll take the one on Matthew first. Does the Father know the second coming, yes or no? That's easy, ain't it? According to both sets of scriptures, yes, the Father knows. Now, next question, does the Son know the second coming? That's easy also, isn't it? Why? Because Jesus said, the answer is no, the Son don't know. And it's not about when he was on the earth in human flesh and all that kind of stuff. Because they said back then, when they were talking to him, Lord, you know all things. Well, obviously, he didn't know if it was so there. You know, you, you, you quote that scripture, but then here he said the son don't know. And the son don't know right now. Only the father knows. The son is subject to him. The son is a minister of the sanctuary in heaven, mediator of the covenant between us and God, prays for you. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, I'll pray for you. He's high priest. Once you catch on to how that's set up in heaven, you'd understand when you go to the Lord in prayer. God has given him all power in heaven and earth, and whatever happens to the church on this earth, you've got to go see Jesus Christ. He said, no man can come to the Father except by me. Because he's high priest. God gave him that authority. And later on, Jesus will give it back. Let's read on. You'll understand if you hang on. Does the son know the second coming? Nope, he sure don't. 
Now, let's look at this right here. Biblical order of rank, 1 Corinthians 15, 27. Apostle Paul wrote this right here, for he, referring to the Father and Princes, has put all things under his feet, referring to the Son. But, notice Paul making an exception. He's kind he of brightening it up here so you can understand some revelation if you want it, if you'll accept it. And somebody said, I ain't, I'm going to accept my church's revelation. Why? Denominations are hard at daughters come from Rome anyway when you understand Revelation 18 or the 17th chapter. And Jerusalem ain't that hard over there either like some are trying to say it was. It wasn't Jerusalem there. She never has reigned over the kings of the earth. Never. She's been under the thumb of most of them all, all throughout history. For he, God, has put all things under his feet, the son's feet, Jesus' feet. But when he said all things are put under him, now when he said everything is under him, Matthew 28 and 18, Jesus said all power is given to me, heaven and earth. He said when he said this, it's manifest, it's made plain, it's obvious that he the Father is accepted. So what is the exception that is not under Jesus' authority? Come on, folks. What is not under Jesus Christ? I asked some of the brethren about that one time. We was riding to work a brown shoe. They, they went to the same church I went to. I didn't come out of it. And I just throwed a question out there. One brother. I said, tell me what in the world, in heaven and earth, universe, or whatever, is not under, the, under Jesus Christ. They rolled eyes around, looked in space, trying to think, what in the world could that be? I said, it's God. And that's what, this is, that's that, what that says. It is manifest that he is accepted, the exception. Now, what did you say to rest of Which did put all things under him. So who put all things under Jesus Christ? It was his father. Jesus said, the father's given me a kingdom, and then I'm going to give you a kingdom. You keep my work to the end, I'll give you power to rule the nations with a rod of iron. I, I, I ain't a betting man if I make it. He'll probably stick me over one of these little towns around here. Lord have mercy. <laughs> i tell you what. i tell you what, folks. If I ever make it to that day, your country, your uh, uh, adulterous country music, your cussing rock and roll music, hip hop stuff, I guarantee you I'll put the stop to that there. That won't be going on in the kingdom of God. <laughs> That'll be shut down. That's going to be shut down. A lot of folk will sell their soul down the drain for that junk music out there because they want to go to the love of the places of the world. Well, let's get off that, though. Stir somebody up the wrong way. Probably already have anyway. Okay, look at this. Order. God, our Father, is Almighty God, Yahweh. Under him is the Son, Jesus Christ, which is the man of Nazareth, that God is highly exalted because he poured out his soul to death. I'll read you that in a minute, I think. Down below him is the church. He's beginning authority over us. He's the head of the church. He's over us in this world. You want to see God? You can't go straight to God. You've got to go to that high priest. According to him. Now let's move on to the next one. Okay, we have some other scriptures here. Uh... You can jot them down if you want to. I'll leave a link on YouTube. I'll put all these uh, slides linked in there. You can look them back up if you need to, have to, whatever. In Matthew 28 and 18, Jesus Christ said, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Now, we just read you the scripture of what Paul said when he said everything's put under him, everything except. Everything except. Let me ask you straight out. What, what, what is not under him? What is the exception that Paul said? Ask somebody that quiz, then show them the scripture. Ask your pastor that. Ask your, you, you wanted some folks in first uh, Pentecost and second and, uh, and the UPC and, and all the independent folks. You ask your pastor to answer that question. Or some of you too afraid to. You'd you be the message in the next service. <laughs> I know, folks. Been down that road, done that. Don't bother me a bit now, buddy. I can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. <laughs> Praise God. And what does it say here? All power given to me, Jesus said. 
Now, what happened in Acts 2, 32, 36? I know Acts 2, 33, what's say there? Jesus Christ, having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this. John the Baptist preached and referring to Jesus Christ, said, that one right there, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Having received the promise, he received the kingdom of God. He's the heir of God. He's taken it in. Everything is under his control except God. And when the Holy Ghost is poured out, it's Jesus' ministry doing this work. He said, you love me, you keep my commandments, I'll pray the Father, and he will send you the comforter. That's because of his intercessory prayer. If he don't pray for you, you won't get the Holy Ghost. He don't pray the Father for you, it won't happen. That's his ministry. Isaiah 53, 10 through 12, read that sometime. God Almighty said right here, because he poured out his soul unto death. I will divide him a portion with the great. Talking about Jesus Christ, Yeshua. I will divide him a portion with the great. God said that about Jesus. Father and son doctrine. John said if they don't bring this doctrine into your house, don't bid them God's speed. And that most of your whole ministers in your churches have got that other doctrine. If somebody actually come in there with that doctrine of father and son, y'all kick him out. I know some of them would be coming in there with a beard. <laughs> Jesus had a beard, apostles had a beard, and yet every you and y'all men is clean shaven, got that from the old Roman attitude of homosexuality, where that come from. Everybody's shaving their beards. And God gave man a beard to make sure you know he's not a woman. <laughs> and then some of y'all go in there and shave it off. Yeah, I got more Bob behind me saying what I'm saying you do on yours. And then you wouldn't let nobody come to your church and preach they got a beard. Some of you wouldn't. I don't know some would, but some won't. That shows you you got that church bylaw doctrine overriding the word of God. That's what the, the, the that's what Jerusalem done. That's what the uh the Israelis and the Judean people done. They took a tradition, overrode the very word of God to establish their little bylaw set up. You ain't allowed to do that. The folks do it anyway. In 1 Corinthians 11 and 3, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Messiah. It's Christ. Same thing. And the head of the woman is the man. <laughs> I know some didn't like that. But it says it and it means it. If you're married out there and you're a woman not on subjecting your husband, you're out of the will of God if you ain't subject to your husband. But then we ain't on that subject, but since it's in that verse, we, we said it. The head of Messiah, the head of Christ, is God. He's over him. That's what it's saying. Just like we showed you in that uh, biblical rank order. Then you go to Hebrews 5, or rather, uh, actually Philippians, verse 9, talking about Yahshua, Jesus Christ. God has highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every name. God exalted Jesus. God, according to Peter's doctrine in his epistle, gave him honor. God gave him honor and glory. Somebody said, yeah, but Isaiah said, my glory I won't give to another. You're talking about Jesus Christ. The man that would overcome and, and, and live this life, and it was, was spoken of in Isaiah 4, 2, uh, 5 and 6, the creator said, he, he called him, he said, I'll hold your hand, I'll keep you. And then God said, and this man I've called in righteousness, I'm not giving my glory to anybody else. It's going to be him. Y'all try to think, oh, everything you got to twist it to try to make it sound like Jesus is the father. And it don't say it in there, not in one verse it don't say it. Stuck on a tradition. I was in there. I learned them pet peeve scriptures. I could quote you within within three months after I got in church. First, uh, St. John 1.1, 1, 1, St. John 1.14, Colossians 2.9, 1 Timothy 3.16, John, St. John 14.8 and 9. And I don't know what all others in there I had. Pat down. They were truth but not pure revelation without the other scriptures that I'm displaying. 
Jesus Christ said they wouldn't even believe it. Reading it to them can't even believe it. And you, you were some one is a surprise why the Trinitarians can't believe them, and then they can't believe the Word of God being read to them. That's a shame. We listen. One faith is t having a mindset that you can overcome and have the same mind that was in Jesus Christ. Let this mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ. That being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. We were ordained before the world. Same thing as it said in the Psalms, where he said, Ye are gods. Jesus Christ requoted, It's not reading your law. I said, You are gods. We're made for this. Mankind was created for this to take on God's fullness. Right now, all of us are in process. We're not there yet. But Yeshua is the first man that's has attained the glory of God. He's the example. And God wants us to follow his pattern. And some folks picked up Rome's pattern on everything. Praise God. God wants you to come out of her. He showed me calling you out. If you don't listen, it's your fault. Like I said before. Some of you thinking about it. Oh, I, you know what? Those scriptures, boy, they sound like they're real. But I can't leave. That's why a woman called me at one time crying from a church I was in prior. But, brother, I, can't, I just can't leave. <laughs> you know why some of you can't leave? First of all, you're, you're stuck in this here thing that we want fancy stuff. We want to show the church across town that's not like us that we got all this stuff, too that we've got bus ministry, we've got a new church, we've got new pews, we've got this, we've got that. Won't keep the commandments of God, break the Sabbath, eat unclean. Rich increase with goods, have need of nothing. Jesus said you're wretched, poor, miserable, and blind. <laughs> Many of them. Ruling authority, 1 Corinthians 15, 24. Then comes the end when he, the Son, shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father. When he shall have put down all rule, all authority, and all power. He's going to put it down. I was in a, a camp meeting one time, and I heard a brother say, the sonship has been done away with. When Jesus died and resurrected and went to heaven, he became God again. That's because of those theology stuff you got probably when you're Trinity when you come up with that. You know, most most one is folks, folks come out of Trinity and they bring the same old dogma with them and they try to kind of put a little different twist to it. That's all they're doing. Now listen, when Jesus at the end when the death is done away with, that's after the white throne judgment, will deliver the kingdom up to God. He rules until then. He'll rule as king on earth when he comes back for a thousand years. Then he will deliver the kingdom to God. That's what Paul wrote. When he shall have put down all rule, all authority, and power. Question, is Paul saying the Son is ruling now? Yes, he is. When the end comes, does the Son deliver the kingdom up to God, his Father, our Father? The answer is yes. Okay, let's read the next uh, verse, last one we got. Join heirs with Christ. First Corinthians 15, 28 follows that last one we read you. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, talking about the Son, Jesus Christ, when everything is subdued to him, then shall the Son also himself be subject to him that put all things under him. You catch that? It then tells us when the last enemy that is destroyed is death, that's when the Son delivers the kingdom to God. Well, the last end will be destroyed after the white throne judgment, after the thousand-year millennial reign. Called the last great day, after the, first, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, there's the eighth day. That's, what, that's, that's a shadow of that. Ain't happened yet. And so the Son will deliver it back to God. 
And it says that the son will be subject to him. That shows he's still alive. He's still a human being. He's still a man. And he delivers it back to God. He puts down all rule, all authority and power. Gives it back to God. Then the son is subject to him. And it goes on to say that God will be all in all. Every human that makes the grade, overcomes the world, receives the fullness of God, will have the almighty Godhead in them. Because that's God's plan. We, will, we are the temple. We become one with him, like Jesus Christ. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We will inherit the kingdom like Jesus did. And every one of us will have the Godhead. Every one of us will have the Father in us. We will be one entity. One entity. Wherever we go, God's in us. We're glorified. There's more behind that after this, even on one verse, but we're not going to that because that's not what it's about today. Praise God. But you can see we're joint heirs. Uh... Even Paul said we're to be thinking not robbery to be equal with God. God's our Father. Jesus Christ is the Son over the church right now, but later on the church, when he delivers the kingdom back to God, the church will be, and God will be all in all. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm losing a buku of, of frame rate, so this most likely will be repeated again in the future, and uh, we will do this until Zito gets their, their uh, system squared away and they don't have the drop frames and stuff. Praise God. All right, praise God. We see we've run our course on it again. If nothing else, they're not good practice. <laughs> you can say that. I went through them, I know, twice already. So all, all this does is help help put put more uh, knowledge into my mind about these verses of scriptures. And uh, so I, I'm, you know, that's good. I like it. I like it. The more I learn, the more I can get crammed into that little old brain of mine up there, is the better off I'll be to know the Word of God. And uh, I appreciate everybody tuned in. Now, I know if you got drop frames, you probably ain't hanging around. If you're getting uh, cuts and cuts and cuts out of it, it's not making sense to you. And uh, But one of these days, they will get everything squared away. If they is true what they said, we're supposed to be getting fiber optics. And they say we will have no more problems about upload and download stuff if we get that. And I'm hoping they're, the guy that told me that, he was one of the maintenance men. I hope he's telling the truth now. I hope he ain't just thought, thought that he was right and wasn't right. You know, I'm not going to hold him to it. I mean, as far as that goes, if the company don't do it, I ain't holding him responsible. He just said what he, well, at least what he thinks. And I'm pretty sure he ought to know. Praise God. But we're going to get ready to close it out. And the free live credit goes, uh, the song that I put a title to it, didn't have no other title to show it. If I could see my brother Danny Edge and my, my third cousin there, I told you the brother Jimmy was my first cousin. And uh, he sang some songs sometimes on here. And this was Brother Danny Edge and my third cousin singing If I Could See. Sound good. I told him one time, you ought to cut a record. and uh, But he never did, you know. And on the end, I got another brother uh, that I got off of a site. That these people having service outside or close to church or on the street or where it was. It's by a man that I, only I know him by, Brother Ray. That's what they called him on there. And the song, I'll Throw Up My Hands. And it's good. It's good. So next week, we're not sure what we'll have yet. But we may be down so much on Zeta, I'm have to re re repeat this again. And I don't like repeating them week after week. Now, I just don't like that. But I, nothing I do, so uh, we have to go with the flow before that goes. So um, we're going to let this play out and, and close it out. So may the Lord God of Israel bless you, keep you, and sanctify you. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen. Got my back to the wall. Satan's coming on strong He really wants me to fall He said trouble my way Well even sickness is part of his plan By myself I can't win I think I throw up my hands I just throw up my hands And start praising the Lord I won't give up cause I stand on his infallible word. When God sees my hands raised, he comes down and inhabits my praise. 
got a dynamite plant sitting just can't stand. When I throw up my hands, somebody throw up your hands. All right. In a place with a drought, there's two ways I can go. I can still wear a smile or let it bring me down low. Satan whispers you through, but I hear Jesus tell me to stand. What am I going to do? I think I'll throw up my hand. I just throw up my head and start praising the Lord. I won't give up cause I stand on his infallible word. And God sees my hands raised. He comes down and inhabits my praise. Got a dynamite plan. Satan just can't stand when I throw up my hand. And God sees my hands raised. Yes, he comes down and inhabits my praise. Got a dynamite plant, Satan just can't stand when I throw up my hands. Everybody throw up your hands and just love on the Lord just a minute.